In this session, we'll go over the high yield material commonly tested on step one at neurology section. We'll start with Alzheimer's disease where you have the buildup of beta amyloid plaque. The hippocampus is usually involved. And the amyloid precursor protein gene located on chromosome 21 is a marker for the early onset Alzheimer's, which is why individuals with Down syndrome who have an extra copy of that gene may develop early onset Alzheimer's. Regarding Parkinson's disease, the presentation is going to be a pill rolling tremor like this. You have cogwheel rigidity, um, like that, and a shuffling gait, just did the penguin, um, as well as postural instability. They have less staining um, in the substantia nigra because they lose the dopaminergic uh, neurons, those cells here. In my step, they ask, where is the substantia nigra? That's located in the midbrain. Besides for having less staining there, you'll also see eosinophilic inclusions. Uh, those are Lewy bodies. Even though you can see these things, we don't actually cut people's heads open to make the diagnosis. Instead, if you want to make the diagnosis, if you give them L-dope and they have a good response, that's enough. The mesocortical pathway is responsible for the negative symptoms, and the mesolimbic pathway is responsible for the positive symptoms. I always remember this as cort being something negative and limbo being a very positive, fun activity. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease affecting oligodendrocytes. You get demyelination of the central nervous system. The internuclear ophthalmoplegia that you can see is because of a lesion to the MLF, which is located in the uh, dorsal pons. And urinary incontinence is because of uh, a problem with the cortical inhibitory fibers, so you have a detrusor hyperactivity. Also, the spasticity seen with multiple sclerosis can be treated with baclofen, which works on GABA B, B for baclofen. Huntington's disease, this presents between the ages of 20 and 50. It's an autosomal dominant disease, a trinucleotide repeat, CAG. It affects the caudate, and you have a low acetylcholine and a low GABA. Uh, people remember CAG, caudate, acetylcholine, GABA. So it affects the caudate, you have low acetylcholine, low GABA. And the presentation is going to be that individual uh, during that age, in that age range between 20 and 50 who presents with a uh, um, maybe depression, uh, aggression, dementia, uh, really these personality changes. People may think you're, you're doing substance abuse. Um, ALS, they like to go after the fact that it's both an upper motor neuron lesion and a lower motor neuron lesion because um, it affects the anterior horn and the cortical spinal tract. Um, and in particular, be aware that the sensations to touch, pressure, pain, those are going to be intact. The treatment's going to be really useful. Uh, ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is also referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. Paranoid syndrome, I'm not, not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, this is when you have a tumor in the pineal gland. Um, usually it's a germinoma, and the pineal gland sits right on top of the superior colliculus, so that gets compressed. The result, the result of that is going to be a vertical gaze palsy where you can't look upwards. Um, you also have a hydro, an obstructive hydrocephalus, and uh, you, will have, uh, you won't have accommodation to light. Like if you shine a light into someone's eye, it won't change. It won't uh, dilate or constrict, but they will be able to change um, depending on if they look at something close and then far and then close and far. So accommodation is intact, um, but the, uh, not to light. All hydrocephalus, upper motor neuron lesions, so you have uh, the signs of, you know, everything goes up, uh, you know, uh, increased reflexes, spasticity, uh, etc. Um, other kinds of hydrocephalus is you could have a communicating hydrocephalus that happens after, for example, meningitis where you have arachnoid granulations uh, and the ventricles will be equally enlarged. You could also have normal pressure hydrocephalus uh, in, this is your wet, wacky, and wobbly. Uh, be aware that the wet is a similar problem with multiple sclerosis where um, the cortical inhibitory fibers, in this case, they get compressed. Pseudotumor cerebri comes up in the fact that it's related to a vitamin A excess. And diabetes and hypertension are super high yield because they really are common and they can affect the brain. Uh, microscopically, they cause the microatheromas and the lipohyalinosis in the small vessels. Um, any, if they block a vessel, anything distal to that in the brain gets liquefactive necrosis. It's that special necrosis that you see there in the brain. Um, and it particularly affects the lenticostriate arteries. Um, so uh, you, can, you can get problems, uh, lacunar infarcts over there. Um, if the subthalamic nucleus is involved, you get a contralateral hemibolismus. And hypertension in particular can cause the little aneurysms. They're called very uh, charcot bouchard Charcot-Bouchard aneurysms, and if they pop, they can bleed into the deep brain structures, 
not good. Um, subarachnoid hemorrhage is also a bleed in, into the brain. Here is also caused by the uh, aneurysms, by, by a popping aneurysm here. It's the Barry aneurysm. This is going to be the worst headache in my life, the thunderclap headache, and the Barry aneurysms. The risk factors include Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos, and polycystic kidney disease. A note on neural tube defects. Uh, they like you to know that you should give folate supplementation to try to avoid these and that the diagnosis is made by seeing, anti by seeing acetylcholinesterase in the amniotic fluid. Uh, acetylcholinesterase should normally just be in the baby CSF, so if it leaked in the, in the amniotic fluid, that's usually a sign that, that there's some kind of defect there. The different lesions to be aware of, retinal artery lesion. This is presents with a sudden onset monocular uh, vision loss. You just lose one vision in one eye. It's painless. Uh, and the problem here is the retinal artery is occluded. They like you to know it's a branch of the ophthalmic artery, which comes from the internal carotid. Uh, cranial nerve two and three lesions are high yield in the fact that, uh, particularly as it relates to the pupillary light reflex, cranial nerve two goes away, uh, cranial nerve three goes towards, which to me is counterintuitive because two should stand for towards, but in this case, two is away, so it's the, a the afferent. Um, cranial nerve three is also involved with uncle herniations when you get those dilated pupils. Cranial nerve three is over there. Um, cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve, a lot, of, a lot of problems when you have a lesion there. One in particular is that you get hyperacusis or increased hearing. And the pathophysiology there is that cranial nerve seven innervates the stapedius muscle, which stabilizes the stapes. So if you lose cranial nerve seven, you get less uh, stabilization of that, that bone. Cranial nerve eight, this is uh, where you get acoustic neuromas or schwannomas. These are usually unilateral hearing loss or, or tinnitus. Um, these have the Antony A, Antony B, these are S100 positive, and they like you to know that it's located between the cerebellum and the pons. Uh, speaking of the pons, a lesion in the pons can cause locked-in syndrome. Uh, that can, two examples would be a basal or artery stroke, or uh, correcting hyponatremia too quickly uh, could cause locked-in syndrome. Uh, with locked-in syndrome, you still have function of your uh, blinking, you can still blink. Prietotemporal lobe lesions, particularly if it's the left one, which is usually the dominant one, uh, can cause Grestman syndrome. When you have the agraphia, acalcula, right to left discoordination, and finger agnosia. Um, dorsal columns, this is affected with B12 deficiency. Uh, this is when you have a problem with proprioception. So if you have a, a lesion there um, and you close your eyes and stand like this, then you'll start falling over. That's a positive Romberg's test. Important medications here, ethosuximide used for Epson seizures. The mechanism of action is it works on the T-type calcium channels. Uh, benzos and barbiturates. Benzos know that increases the frequency. Barbs increase the duration. I remember my friend Ben, so F for Ben. Uh, benzos, frequency. Because they're mind-altering, you don't want to give them to elderly people who have Vriska Falls. You don't want to give them to anyone who's on a anti one uh, first generation antihistamine uh, blocker. Uh, and you also, you don't give this for sleep. If someone has trouble sleep and you want to treat it with medication, you go first line is Ramelteon, and after that is Olpidum. Regarding opioids, the, they are the largest cause of overdosing medications. Um, and if a patient comes to you and says, I have you know, a prescription for it, um, double check and make sure that they actually have a prescription for it. Uh, inhaled anesthetics, lastly, these can cause full mitten liver hepatitis or liver failure. If you looked on microscopy, you'll see the central, you'll see central lobular necrosis of the liver. Um, you'll see increased liver enzymes, so increased ALT, increased uh, AST. You'll see increased PT as well. And uh, another thing about these uh, anesthetics, the higher the MAC, the lower the potency. So the MAC and the potency are, are kind of inverse there. Um, I remember this as PCs being better than MACs and people with MACs are low potency. I don't know if that'll help. I have a MAC. Um, so the higher the MAC, lower the potency and the blood gas partition coefficient, that tells you about solubility. So if something is more soluble, it's going to want to stay in the blood. And if it stays in the blood, it takes longer to get to the brain. So the higher the solubility, the longer it is until the medication takes effect. It also, once it's in the brain, it's not going to want to leave. So it has a longer, longer onset and longer duration in, in, in time until it wears off. Uh, so this is uh, the review, a quick review of high yield topics on the neurology section. We didn't cover everything. There's a ton of things. Um, these are things that, these are topics that, uh, you know, I've seen more questions on. I hope this is helpful. If it is, let me know, leave a comment. Uh, that is it for the neurology system. I hope.